Most of the computer-generated characters we encounter are found in entertainment, like video games. Those characters can have rudimentary artificial intelligence, but rarely interact with us the same way we expect of real people. So, how are you doing today? At USC ICT's Virtual Humans Lab, researchers are looking at ways to develop artificial characters that use language, gestures, and emotions in their interactions with us. I was created to talk to people in a safe and secure environment. I'm not a therapist, but I'm here to learn about people and would love to learn about you. I'll ask a few questions to get us started. I sat down with Ellie, a virtual interviewer, which is designed for use in mental health therapy. She's, a, she's made to ask questions. She's meant to listen. Um, she was created to try to help veterans coming back from mm. um, deployment. So it, a lot of them come back with PTSD or, or um, depression, and they're often not caught. They kind of fall through the, the cracks. Ellie was able to track my behavioral, emotional, and even social cues during our conversation. Do you consider yourself more shy or outgoing? Um, maybe right in the middle. Tell me more about that. <laughs> um, the first step to creating a useful virtual character is to study how people interact using camera data. Researchers then run trials with a Wizard of Oz-like technique with puppeteered characters to develop scripts and algorithms for fully automated AI systems. Another virtual human demo in development at USC ICT is a bit more complicated with the goal of creating AI for negotiation training. The virtual humans here have to make decisions, read emotions, and even use deception, all of which require social intelligence. Let's come up with a plan that we can walk out of here and benefit from. How okay. does that sound to you? Sounds great. How do you think we should split up the items? All of these intuitive behavioral norms we learn at a young age are actually really difficult to program into AI. Currently, the negotiation agent can say 5,000 things, and those all are verbatim things that the humans we brought in uh, said in their negotiations. And this negotiation agent that you interacted with, she's still controlled by a wizard. In fact, two wizards. One is uh, doing the decisions, and one is doing the nonverbal communication. The research done here will have implications far beyond the therapist's office and even business schools. As John Gratch, director of the Virtual Humans Research at USC ICT, explained to me, the AI of autonomous cars, for example, will need the ability to operate in the social environment of city street traffic. And so when I'm crossing the street in LA, I look to that car uh, and I look to that driver and I see, does that driver see me before I cross the street? That so sort of social intelligence, and so, uh, and, and when I make a mistake, I say, "Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't, I'll do better next time." You know, and those are things that I think fully autonomous systems will have to incorporate into their capabilities. So when Google um, is going to navigate through New York City streets, it has to send signals somehow. Oh, I see you. I see you. Social niceties, politeness, all that kind of stuff actually serves functions and relationships. It, it makes communication more efficient. It tells me who I can trust. And as uh, we move away from simple automation to autonomous systems that has their own goals and maybe not exactly the same goal as a human user, uh, it becomes more and more important to understand this kind of way that humans deal with that so that machines can do that as well. I mean, those systems are coming. Yeah. I mean, you look at the experiment like this, and you can look at it and say, oh, you're trying to replace human-human interactions with human-computer interactions as a way to scale or to make it more accessible or for education. But what you're talking about is taking those lessons and putting them in autonomous systems or human-computer interaction systems that are that need them, that maybe we don't know they need them now. Yeah, I mean, I think in general, there's an interest in computer science in uh, not replacing people, but making machines like partners with people. And, uh, and there's also this idea of what's called human-centered computing. So up to now, you've had to dumb yourself down to the level of the computer, and you, you adapt yourself to how the computer works. And the idea in human-centered computing is make the computer adapt itself to you, come up to your level. And so ideally, you'll be interacting or interfacing with this technology at the level that people interact with each other. 